What is with the victim mentality in America? I really think that this is an American crisis. And until we can, people like take responsibility for their own actions and behavior, we're just screwed as a nation. This segment is brought to you by Eastside Weight Loss Clinic. I'm down 37 pounds on the program and I lost most of that weight in just two months. There's no prepackaged meals, no counting calories, no drugs or injections. Schedule your free 15 minute consultation today at eastsideweightlossclinic.com. Take responsibility for your actions. That's what you have to do as an adult, especially if you're working in the public sector, if you're a taxpayer-funded school teacher, or if you are a public figure of some kind. So we did a story yesterday, we led the show, with um, just the insane amount of political sign theft that's been going on. And, and I said, you know, it's not even about, like, the legality of the signs that are placed or the legality of removing them. It's about being so triggered by a piece of cardboard that you feel compelled to tear it out of the ground. And it just isn't that a sad state of discourse? You know, normal people like us, we, are, we drive by political signs, dozens of them every day, and we don't get the urge to stop our car, get out, and remove them. But it's just happening more and more frequently, um, and we get sent an awful lot of videos. So we highlighted two of them yesterday, two women, one in Lacey, one in Seattle, who were ripping Let's Go Washington signs out of the ground in support of the initiatives. Uh, we have identified both of the women. <laughs> it didn't take very long. One of them uh, in Lacey lives in a 55-plus community. Actually, we have a viewer who lives there as well um, and plans to talk to this woman about you know what she did uh the other one first of all i'm very happy to know that it wasn't the woman from unsellable homes <laughs> you were so i sure. was so convinced because i i love that show so much and they both seem like i want to be their best friends and they live in or they have the uh, shop in snohomish and i love snohomish and i was like it better not be them because like i would be broken hearted so i can confirm it was not the woman from unsellable homes Thank you, Jesus. Uh, however, we didn't identify this young woman. She actually identified herself. So just as a reminder, here's a clip of the video. Again, this took place in the Laurelhurst neighborhood of Seattle. Show my sign when I report to the police. Go ahead. Yeah. Go What's ahead. What's your name, ma'am? Hmm. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? I don't know. You are putting You're stealing these signs. my sign. That's not your land. It's not your land. It's a public right-of-way, ma'am. Do you live here in this neighborhood? Does it matter? It's public right-of-way, miss. Why are you wanting to stop the take gas it. ban? Take because it's my right. It's public, you know, it's free speech. Are you against free speech? No. Then why do you take my sign? Why are you putting it in my neighborhood? Why not? This is my neighborhood. So what? It's my state. This is what's between us right now, right? The sign, something, something, an inanimate object is what's standing between us right now, and I think is giving us a really. Well, we're having Not a conversation a, about this. We are this. having a conversation, but think about how it started, you know. Well, like, you took my sign down. Of course I took your sign. Why? Because I'm like, I disagree with it. Of course. <laughs> Isn't that totally normal? Well, of course I took your sign. I disagree with it. Like, think of that mindset. Uh, and I was pretty hard on that woman yesterday, just thinking, like, the absolute, like, sanctimony, righteousness of being like, of course, well, of course I took your sign. I disagree with you. Ma'am, like 1.5 million Washingtonians signed their names to those initiatives. So there's a lot of people right, left, and center who support them and who don't want you ripping their signs out of the ground. So anyway, we did that and I pushed it out and I said, man, this chick looks familiar to me. I think she looked familiar because she looks so much like the chick from that HGTV show. But anyway, I had also said, you know, the way when he said, what's your name? And she's like, mm-hmm. What do you think it is? I was like, she has to be like famous or something. So she's not famous, but she is like an Instagram influencer. I've never seen this page before, so I don't think this is why she looked familiar to me. But she didn't, we didn't, like one of you didn't tell us who she was. She got in touch with me via Instagram. She tagged me and said, Cruise News, heard you're looking for me. <laughs> Her name is Heidi Kaluza. Uh, of sustainable style, the Rogue Essentials calls herself a digital creator, revealing the style industry through advocacy and investment. So she like advocates for sustainable style. I called her a fashion influencer. She didn't like that very much, but that's just how her page came across me as a fashion influencer. So anyway, and she said she tagged me, and I thought, oh, maybe she wants to talk about it. And so I, uh, it didn't take long though. This was like I would say 15 minutes after our show wrapped yesterday. Uh, she tagged me and said, Brandy, heard you're looking for me. So I invited her on the show, gave her an email. Uh, we have not heard from her yet, but now I know why. So here's where this gets fascinating. And I'm going to talk about this. It's more than just like one lady with a sign, temper tantrum or whatever. It's this bigger issue that we have of like, 
this victim mentality and this where we've come as a society where man if you disagree with someone politically they might as well be the devil and anything you do or say about them is completely fine and that's just insane so get this so she takes me on instagram and i look at her page days ago before we did this story before the video of her removing this sign and telling the guy like why are you here was made public she had actually taken to her instagram account and created her own video talking about this experience with the let's go washington guy now you've seen the video and how she behaved and what she did well days before that video came out here's how she characterized the encounter on her own instagram let me introduce you to these losers to make a long story short this guy we're gonna call him minion i don't know his name was creeping around my neighborhood looking really sus illegally setting up political signage on city property and when i ran into him on my daily walk and i was like what's going on what is all this about he pulled out his phone and started filming me without my consent accusing me of stealing his signs it only took a few minutes to ascertain that he was here in my neighborhood in king county when he is from Thurston County at the behest of Brian Haywood and Jim Walsh. If you don't know who Brian Haywood is, he is a hedge fund manager who refers to himself as a climate refugee from California. Think about that in terms of what just happened with Hurricane Helene. He's nice and safe here at his estate in Redmond. I don't know, how much do you think that costs? 10, 15, 20 million dollars? Do you also know that he has a place in Japan? That in order to build it, he had to literally deconstruct all of these other houses that he found around Japan and then reconstruct them on this other property there. Gosh, what does that cost? 20, 30, 50 million dollars? But don't you worry. Legislator Jim Walsh and Brian Haywood, they're here for the little man. And probably all of the oil and gas companies and synthetic textile companies that he's invested in through his hedge fund, right? Back to the little man. Because Brian Haywood, oh, he's such a hero. He has sunk almost $7 million of his own money into pushing initiatives to block Washington State's clean energy transition. It's almost like he has a personal vested and urgent interest that would really only continue to benefit him if these initiatives pass. But what do I know? I'm just a girl. Yeah, that's how it ended. I'm just a girl. Okay, so this was days ago before the video of what she actually did and how she actually behaved came out. She took to her own Instagram and, and makes fun of the guy, you know, called him a minion, calls all these people she disagrees with politically losers, goes into this tirade about um, how Brian Haywood must be like invested in gas and oil, which I, I've asked just out of due diligence, but you don't think that would have come out in the media that he has some sort of investment in gas and oil. Um, it, which, so making accusations she has no evidence of, uh, making it seem like she's totally the righteous one in this situation and never mentioning what she did, that she took the sign, someone else's sign, because in her own words, she disagreed with it. So now the actual video of what she did came out and how she looks ridiculous, like a child. Um, and it's just absolutely inexcusable behavior. So now she's the victim. Now she's the victim, even though, you know, she's on Instagram days ago calling people she disagrees with politically losers. So just, I just, and she's blocked me after reaching out to me saying, I heard you're looking for me. Doesn't like, apparently, didn't want to look in a mirror and, oh, I look really bad in that video, I you know, and so blocks me. But here's a couple of things on her Instagram account right now. Um, the whole losers thing is still up. She's calling people who are calling her out for the sign theft white supremacists. Hmm. Um, she's Fuse Washington, a progressive group opposed to the initiative, says, thanks for spreading the word about these losers. She says, my pleasure. She again is accusing Brian Haywood of coming at the campaign hard because he has a very vested interest in keeping gas and oil, um, which there's, again, no evidence of, uh, and says that... Um, it says Brandy's looking for views and outrage. We know how this works. When she was the first person to actually post about this, it wasn't us. We just went and found it. Um, look, if you're unhappy with how you came across, that's your, that's, that's, you need to look in a mirror. I mean, this is, unfortunately, you became an example of the larger conversation we're having of the fact that people are so unhinged that they have to go and, and grab a piece of cardboard that has some words and numbers on it they disagree with. 
Like, that's a crazy thing. And I'm sorry, like, as someone who has a forward facing public persona, you should conduct yourself better in public. And you should really think about the fact that, you know, I think it's she knew this guy was recording her, obviously, didn't think it would ever get out there, um, told her own tale about what happened. And clearly the video shows otherwise. I mean, she says it in her own words, like, of course, I took your sign. I disagree with it. So it's this crazy victim mentality. You know, I think there was every opportunity in the world for her to say, look, I shouldn't have grabbed his sign, you know, or and she was even, you know, back bashing this guy. I don't I don't know the the let's go Washington person, but saying that it was a really creepy encounter. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe it was, but you engaged in the encounter. You could have just kept walking. You decided to take his sign. You kept engaging him in conversation, going and trying to look up, you know, what the initiative was all about with him. So like you kept him there for quite a while. So that's the thing is like this victim mentality is just so toxic for our country. And until people start and feel like they have to own the consequences of their behavior and, and you know, if confronted with them, fess up to, hey, you know, I could have done that better or maybe not. I just don't think that as a country, this political division or anything like that is going to get any better. And look, you'll never find a video of me behaving like that out in public. Never. You'll never, you know, the, the, the most uh, politically um, opinionated I get is right here on this show. Um, but we're all responsible for how we behave uh, whether I'm in front of a microphone or off a microphone or out and about and uh, public or private. And so there's just this real victim mentality as opposed to being, you know, introspective and saying, you know, did I handle that situation the best? Should I have been so bothered by a political yard sign or should I have just kept walking? And you know what? Yeah, take into my Instagram and said, hey, I'm seeing people put up these yard signs. Here's why I'm voting against the initiatives. That's perfectly fine. You know, when I did door knocking the other day for Dave Reichert and the initiatives, when I was met with someone who said they'd made up their mind, and it was for the other side or whatever it is, I told him, get your ballot in anyway. You know, every, like, I, you know, make sure you get your ballot in regardless of how you vote because it's democracy. So rather than tearing people down, calling them losers or whatever it is, rather than tearing signs down, literally, go put a sign you like up. Like, I hate to sound Pollyannish and like, yay, go put a sign you like up. Find some no on the initiative signs and go put that thing right next to the yes on the initiative signs or make some social media posts talking about your position on it. Um, you know, don't go tearing other people down literally, figuratively. It's ridiculous. And I, now I'm going to be the what? What am, I, what am I now? A white supremacist? Because I like actually put a, a video out of what you just did. I mean, you know, it's like barely the one we aired yesterday is barely edited. We just edited out a part where they're sitting in like on their phones looking at a policy and you can barely hear them. But just wild stuff. So the internet strikes again. Mm -hmm.